by the way, we are here again to show you some good exciting moves on self-defense. But today, we are going to be specific on how to throw good punching on the streets or however. Stay tuned and enjoy this. Okay. First of all, we need to know how punching is. In reality, everybody knows how to punch, but it's not everybody that knows how to do effective punching. Some persons just know this is a punch, but what does that punch carry? They do not really know much about the punch they think they know. Now, we we'll first of all show, show the, the layman punch. Just swing a layman punch. Good. Now, that is a layman punch. A layman punch that is done anywhere on the street, as far as the layman that is the novice of a, 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 a martial art. Now, when you swing, swing, it also carries effect to some extent, but there's a limitation. And the limitation is this. Okay, let me see. Swing it again. Swing the punch, go. All right, now swing again, go. Swing again, go. Now, if you notice that the punch just flies off the pad, there's no much effect. There's an effect, but there's no much effect. Now, we'll make you understand what we are talking about subsequently when we're talking about the other kind of punching. But first, let's roll with this. Now, take that again, go. Round it again. Good. Fine. Now, how this punch is taken and what makes it a substandard punch, the, the, what, the defect, what causes the defect of this punch is what we are going to see now. This punch comes from there, travels all the way and swings up. But in our own little way of understanding punch, that's layman now I'm talking about, will think that gathering momentum from all that way down here is what will give you a good and effective punch which carries so much strength but i say no all right like i said we'll get to understand as we go on now the process of this punch travels all the way now if it comes to the defending of this punch that traveling or the steps taken to execute the punch is a good room for a very good counter to stop the punch, to stop the punch up with. Now, try to take the punch. You see that? It's a very good room because by the time he moves the hand from there, you see there? You will not even wait for the hand to come back because the hand, as it moves back, you know what it's coming for. So as it moves back, you are in and stuck the hand there. So it gives a very good room for the opponent to attack or counter or stuck the punch without actually executing or getting to its point of target. All right. Now, that is for the layman roundhouse punch. Now we also have a roundhouse punch that is a coordinated roundhouse punch, which is specifically trained by martial artists. Now, take the roundhouse punch that is the coordinated one. Train roundhouse punch. Go. You see the difference. Go. 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 Now let's go back to the other roundhouse. Go. See what happens. Now take this other one now. Go. You see the difference. See the bounce. Go. Pull again. Go. See the bouncing. Now, this goes to show that the striking of this one is more coordinated and it carries more weight and more force. And what, is, what enhances that is because of the weight. This is the main point that carries the strength of every punch which the layman do not know 
The punch comes from the weight, and that is where the weight and the strength of the punch comes from. And two, it does not give a sign coming from there. It comes from where it is, from its base. It doesn't leave the base, travel and return. It comes from the base. And by this now, it doesn't really give a good room for you, for anybody to be able to stock it halfway. Except you are trained and you are, you are trained for it and you have speed to be able to, to go in to stock it. Otherwise, it is not easy for you to do that compared to the Lehman Roundhouse Fund. All right. Now we are done with that. Now let's move to, to the straight point. Which is the most effective? From here we'll learn and we'll see how or what I mean by being most effective. Now strike the, the part with straight point. Go. Again, go. Again, go. And the last one, go. Good. Now drop the punch there in the air. Okay. To execute any effective punch, the weight is not left out. Like I said, the weight is the base. The base of the strength and the weight that the punch carries. The weight. And two, this straight punch does not only depend on the weight, it also depends on the elbow. Because when the elbow is straightened, it carries another effect and strength. Now to show that, bend your elbow. Just don't change, just bend the elbow. Alright. Now strike from there. Just strike the punch from there. Again. Again. See that? That is just from the elbow to show you. Now hold the part. Let me show you something. Now from here, this is straight. Now I bend it a bit. You see that? Just the elbow to show you that I'm not applying anything. I'm not applying my body. It's just the elbow. To show you that the elbow also carries something. Now if I apply, see the effect. So the straight punch now carries, has the support of the waist and the support of the elbow being straight to make it effective if you're punching and your elbow is bent at the point of the punch it is known that that punch is not good enough it's not effective enough that is why in in a, in a karate kumite competition scoring they do not score you a point when your elbow is bent because they understand that that punch has no effect as far as the elbow is not there okay all right now that is that for the execution now how do you actually execute the punch the point of target the landing point and the point of target on the wrist or on the fist we have warning punch warning punch is if you're punching with your full fist, that's a flat fist, this is a warning punch. Why I call it warning punch is because it will actually cause injury, but the injury it will cause cannot be compared to when you take this two knuckle punch. This is most devastating. Two knuckle punch can actually break a jaw. Two knuckle punch can actually break a jaw. And also, if it lands on the rib case, it can break, penetrate. Because if one knuckle, one one aligns with a rib, it to break it. What gives the rib a little bit of uh, strength is because they are joined together. And the pressure that comes on them 
just come all at once and they are just absorbing the pressure together but now this sponge will create a room where only one rib bone can take that pressure which one knuckle can land can succeed to land on one rib bone and it cannot take the pressure alone it will break so it is very devastating and this is the most way to take or strike an effective punch knuckle punch like i said the flat knuckle fist punch is a warning punch that is how i put it because it will not give you the effect that you actually or the injury that you may be expecting okay so that is that for the punch now let's let's see the punching processes again now okay let's talk about first let's talk about how to defend the straight punch it is not very easy to defend the straight punch because it comes straight and it has speed now the the way you can manage to defend the straight punch is if you are a trained fighter layman it is not easy for you to defend the straight punch especially when it has to do with when you are positioned this way and has to do with your front fist, front hand, it comes with the, the lightning speed like that. So how do you defend that? Because you rarely see it, it comes like that at once. So it is not easy to see it, except you're well trained. Okay now, now let's try to work one or two ways of how a trained person, a trained martial artist could defend or escape from straight punch now take a straight punch ask me go you have to either find your way to any of the sides either you go to this side or you go to that side but you must find your way to wave as swift as possible to one side to make the punch move out okay now take the straight punch again go see that the first I went there, the second I went there. You must find a way to wave like that. Body movement, body movement. Okay. Now, if we now compare this now to the other roundhouse punch that is coordinated, the roundhouse punch that is coordinated. Now, how to escape that roundhouse punch is also not easy. Now, this is it. It, it, it has almost a similar way, like. The layman roundhouse sponge but now take the roundhouse sponge on me let's see, go you sink down and move out now sinking down and move out go again you sink down and move out now if you watch something when you feel when you pass just pause there go pause there now this is another move another motion for something else this is what uh, the, the edge that this other roundhouse punch has over the layman roundhouse punch because if I escape to this way now and I don't do anything immediately that is what happens you can come return one I can return with the elbow Bam. good now we go to the layman roundhouse punch now take the layman round for go yeah can you see this now from here for him to travel back all the way there it's not easy before he does that I am here because he has gone far and most in fact by the time he takes that punch he might even swing him up most likely that yes. is what happens good that is what happens like so you see you can now see the difference between the two roundhouse punches the layman and the coordinated trained roundhouse punch this other one is so coordinated that it moves, it does not swing the, the executor and it gives the executor another chance to also go on with something else if he happens to miss the first strike. Okay? Alright. Now, we have been able to assess and compare the three way punches we have worked on or we have checked on. We can now understand or decide for ourselves to, to, to know that which one do we prefer. We prefer the layman roundhouse punch, which is 
of course not too good or the other ones but in fact i will advise you train and work hard to be able to learn the from i mean uh, the coordinated roundhouse punch and the straight punch and also to take note of the punching pattern knuckles two knuckles and elbow if you're taking straight elbow must be straight and the waist also is not left out because that is the base for the strength and the weight of the punch all right now we're going to stop here for today viewers and also first time out please i'll remind you do not forget to subscribe and hit the bell and also we're waiting to get your comments thank you